Hi everyone, my name is Ava and I'm an American living in the Netherlands and today I wanted to talk to you about relationships. Relationships between the US and the Netherlands. Everything living in the Netherlands has taught me about relationships. Well first, coffee. The sun is out today so I just couldn't bring myself to sit behind my laptop and my computer. So we're gonna go to the park, get coffee and a little cinnamon bun maybe. So it was really funny because I went to order at this place and I fully expected to order in Dutch and then uh, they of course started speaking to me in English because I'm in Amsterdam and I thought if this is even weird for me then it must be really weird for Dutch people to live in their own country and not be able to speak Dutch. I don't know, that's just interesting. I'm not like against interna internationalization or anything, but... Look at this cinnamon bun. Do you think it tastes as good as it looks? Let's find out. Oh, I love Dutch cities because so many of them have such a nice park like in the middle of the city in a busy neighborhood. Look at this. This is just in the middle of the pipe. The pipe is a really happening, popping area. And then you just have all this green. I mean, as a city girl, this is my idea of nature. You know what I mean? I love these tiles on the inside. Gorgeous. Anyway, as promised, we are now here to talk about a very elusive topic, relationships. And let me tell you, my idea about relationships has really evolved since I moved to the Netherlands from the United States. And I'm going to talk about some differences between friendship and dating. First of all, that's what we're focusing on in this video, because turns out relationships can be very broad if you think about it, your relationship with work, etc. So we're focusing on the juicy friendships and dating in this video. So the first sort of section I want to talk about is fast versus slow. So in the US, I find that friendships and relationships can happen very quickly. And that seems to be the more general rule. Whereas here in the Netherlands, I find that relationships and friendships are slow. It is like watching a pot of water boil. And as they say, a watched pot never boils. And that's kind of, I feel like the person who came up with this phrase was not talking about physics. No, they were talking about Dutch relationships because that has been my experience at least. Okay, but what do I mean by this? So in the US, when I say that friendships and relationships are really fast, I mean, they can happen overnight. So in the US, it kind of isn't uncommon to meet someone and then immediately hit it off and then you spend a lot of time together. So let's say in the US you were out with friends, right? And then you happen to go to a bar and let's say you just meet up with another friend group and then you meet someone in that friend group who you hit it off with immediately, right? So in the US, that friendship will then, you know, it has a spark that's ignited and then those two people will continue hanging out and they are immediately friends. And when I say it's fast, it's not just that you immediately feel that click. What I also mean is that in the US, you're quicker to call each other friends than if you were in the Netherlands. Now in the Netherlands, as I said, this is a slow, slow, painful burn. So what typically happens is that you meet someone. Let's say you meet a colleague at work and you really hit it off, right? Then maybe you work together for six months. I'm not joking. You work together for six months and then at some point you say, hey, shall we get a drink after work? And maybe they say yes, you know, they have to like figure out their agendas to find a spot for you because Dutch people like to plan everything. So maybe that takes another three months, then you have a coffee and then three years later, you're friends, boom. Maybe that is a little bit exaggerated, but honestly, that's kind of how it all feels to me here in the Netherlands. I mean, I have made some Dutch friends quicker than that, but let me just say that you know, it takes a lot more time for a Dutch person to call you their friend because they already have their friends. They have their friends that they grew up with or friends that they met in college. And kind of after that, it becomes, maybe it's an age thing, but it really like takes a lot longer for you to become friends than in the US. In the US, you meet someone at work and you could really honestly feel like you're friends with them and call them a friend after a week. That is totally normal. In the Netherlands, if you were to do that, I bet they would take out a restraining order. So this was all obviously a big shift for me. I moved to the Netherlands and then I discovered that, you know, touch people really like to keep their distance. So does that mean that my view on relationships has deteriorated since I moved here? Actually, surprisingly not. This brings me to the next thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to relationships here, and that is superficial versus deep. Now, of course they say that with age, you know, the number of friends you have decreases and the quality of friends you have increases. 
I mean, that's what they say, right? <laughs> but people say a lot of things. Anyway, so in the US, you know, Americans are really fast at making friends. That's what I said. But that also happens because it's really easy to strike up conversations or friendships with Americans because we're really good at small talk. We're really good at touching at those, you know, like basic conversations like, oh, where are you from? What do you do? And I think because of that, it's really easy to feel a connection with someone. And I do think that's a strength that Americans have. But I find it unfortunate that it stops there. When I moved to the Netherlands, I noticed that conversations are very deep. And I also find that because of it, your relationships with people are very deep. And the reason I think that friendships here take time is because I think the quality of friendships are very strong here. The connections that you make with people are way deeper than I had in the US. I'm not saying I didn't have good friends there, but it's, I had a couple of good friends and then I had a lot of acquaintances who I would still call friends. But here I have a lot more high quality, deeper, meaningful friendships. And let me explain that a little bit more. So let's say in the US, right? With your American friends, if something happens, you this is like you'll message your friends and then you'll all get together and have drinks and talk about it. And of course they're there for you. But in the Netherlands, it goes beyond that. So you have something happen. Let's say you go through a breakup or something and then you tell your friends, right? So you meet up and you talk about it, of course, but then it doesn't stop there. What I've noticed is that Dutch people are also really good at checking in on you when something happens at various points. Like here, you could be moving and like friends will write that down in their calendar. Like, oh, Ava is moving on this date. So then on before that date, they'll ask you if you need help. Around that date, they'll block off time in their calendar for you. They'll get in touch to ask you what you need. So there's this whole process <laughs> built around this friendship. And that I think is the reason why Dutch people are really hesitant to call you a friend when they aren't sure that they can make that type of investment with you. And I've really learned that since moving here that, you know, relationships uh, should be something that you actually take a little bit more seriously. Anyway, but what about dating? Well, you should know that I've only dated one Dutch person that I know of. But that doesn't mean that I haven't seen dating and other types of, you know, romantic relationships around me. So now I want to talk a little bit about the non-traditional aspects of dating in the Netherlands. Now, let me tell you something. Couples in the Netherlands can be very traditional, just like in the US. But what fun is that to talk about in this video? I'm going to instead talk about the non-traditional aspects that I've seen. And starting with the former prime minister in the Netherlands because the former prime minister, Mark Rutte, who was the prime minister of the Netherlands for, I don't know, 200 years, um, I think 14, if I'm being accurate, right? Well, very long time. He famously has not had a public relationship. And in the US, that is unimaginable. It would be unthinkable that the president of the United States is like this unmarried person. No, it needs to be a family man, you know, with a with kids and everything show that they have good moral traditional American values. Whereas here in the Netherlands, I think people don't care too much about that. They're like more concerned with the actual individual running their country. So I actually found that really refreshing and it was a completely different take. Like I think I was really, uh, it, I found it quite jarring in the beginning because in the U S that is such a heavy focus about the candidate, which, if you think about it, really, really shouldn't play a role in their politics and how they're going to run the country. But sadly, that is the case. Now, the other difference is how marriage is not the defining factor in a romantic relationship. So in the US, if you're married, you're, you're married and that comes with a whole lot of things like legal and also just not legal, personal. In the Netherlands, marriage is sure a step, but it isn't given the importance in the Netherlands that it is in the U S. So to give you an example, if you want to come to the Netherlands because you met a nice Dutch lady, uh, like I did, you do not need to be married in order for you to get a visa. You could just prove that you are in a partnership and not a partnership in the legal sense, just like you've been dating this person for a while. And when we did that, we just had to submit 
all kinds of like Facebook photos and like our address where we live together and just like evidence that we have been dating for a long time. In the US, you need to be married. It's not that you could get a visa or anything like that without proving your relationship with this person legally. I think this really goes back to how Dutch people view relationships. To them, a relationship is really important and the connection is extremely meaningful and the legal aspect of it is just something on top. It's an additional layer. It's not the basis of your relationship. And you also see that in how Dutch people talk about each other's families when they're romantically involved. Like from the very beginning, people would always talk about my in-laws, even though we were not married yet. I found that very strange because I'm like, it literally says in-law. The word is mother-in-law or father-in-law, but that's just not how Dutch people view it. They just say, well, you know, you're a schoonouders and you're, you've been like dating six months. Now, this other thing that's different is the civil partnership. In the Netherlands, if you have a civil partnership, that is a big deal. You're basically married. I think there are just one or two uh, small differences between being married and having a civil partnership. And one of those differences is, is that it's not recognized to the same degree in other countries. So that could be a deciding factor in whether you decide to get married or do a civil partnership. I actually heard an interesting story about this the other day where a couple moved from a country where a civil partnership was like definitely not a big deal but they moved to the Netherlands and now they're basically married. In the Netherlands, it just means so much more. And if you like decide that you don't wanna be in this relationship anymore and you have a civil partnership, it's basically like going through a divorce. Like it takes a lot of legal effort to have that undone. And the existence of a civil partnership may be the reason why many Dutch people actually just don't choose to get married. They'll do the civil partnership and to them it feels a little somehow less intense than marriage and they'll just be in that relationship their whole lives without ever getting married. They'll have, they'll bought a house together, they'll have kids together and they'll be in a civil partnership, but maybe they'll never get married. And that is unbelievably common here in the US. I don't know very many people who are in a relationship with each other and then they have a house and they have kids and then they're not married. Here in the Netherlands, I know so, so many couples who are not married, my age, older. It's really not an age thing. It's just that people here in the Netherlands will buy the house, they'll have kids together and you know have the civil partnership. And then maybe after 10, 20 years or so, maybe they'll think one day, hey, maybe, maybe we should get married, you know? It seems like it's working out between us, so I think I'm ready to take that step with you, you know, like when they've been together 20 years. Okay, and how has that impacted me? Well, before I met my Dutch wife, I definitely, definitely wanted to get married. Like, I couldn't imagine not getting married. And we are married now, but there was a period of time where because she came from this Dutch culture where marriage was not as important and she personally was kind of against marriage. So she would be the loudest voice in any room being like, I never want to get married. Um, but I think we kind of like pulled each other towards her own beliefs. So at some point I really was like, wow, I don't see why we would get married. Like I am really secure in our relationship and I really understand this like idea and background of like having commitment, which is way more important than any kind of legal document. And then I think she found the value in getting married, you know, especially as a queer couple. And we both thought it was really special that you could get married as a queer couple. And in the Netherlands, how it's the first country to legalize same-sex marriage. So I think we both thought that was really cool, but marriage to me no longer became this prerequisite to be in a long-term committed relationship. It was just something we decided to do because we wanted to, but it, to me, honestly lost a lot of that weight and significance that it had held once for me. So those are some of my experiences and thoughts that I had about relationships between the Netherlands and the United States. As usual, I'm curious to hear about your own experiences in the comments down below. And until next time,